Imagine playing Halo CE on the PlayStation 5. Well, I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to scare you. But with the rumors from Tom Warren, it may be a reality. But within this report, there was supposedly a rumor of a Halo CE, quote, remaster in the works, but only the early stages of development. Now, this news was shocking. You had Halo fans outright crying with tears of joy, literally soiling themselves, while others were more concerned on what this means with the franchise. I've had some time to think about this news, and by the end of the video, my goal is to have you understand the full picture on why why this could be a good idea or just go completely wrong. What do you want to see in a Halo CE remake? What are the possible things that could go wrong with a remake of the original Halo title? Let's get lost on the Halo ring, wonder how Johnson got back to Earth, and jump right into this. Now I know most people are essentially creaming their pants that we will actually get a remake of Halo CE and yes, I did get excited thinking about jumping back into the classic game, but I feel like I need to slow the approach to this new story and think first about my fears or concerns I have with a possible remake of the original and beloved Halo title. Now, one of the biggest fears I had when I first heard they were coming up with this remake was whether or not this would be the same story of the past or one of those remaking the story in the modern age type of bullshit. And one thing that has been consistent is that every time I heard the phrase like clockwork is a complete and utter disaster. Resident Evil 3, Warcraft 3 Forge. I mean, we all remember those horrifying remade cutscenes, right? You to the ends of the earth if I have to. Do you hear me? To the ends of the earth! And I think to myself, one of the biggest things that you can do instantly that causes a misery amongst the entire Halo fan base is to change the story from what it was under Bungie and make it more modern so that more people might like it. Especially when you hear the words for a modern audience, it sort of makes me die of cringe thinking of the failed gaming projects that had attempted this. Now don't get me wrong, there are some things I could see getting a facelift and not really bat an eye about. But when I think of this situation, one of the biggest indicators of a horrible remake is to change everything and expect fans to just accept it and buy your product. But people might say, Mars Man, remaking games is always good. Oh yeah, well, what the hell you call this? I would have never thought it would be possible, but somehow, some way, Activision had literally broke the formula of taking an amazing IP and remaking it into oblivion and putting a worser version of it out for the public. Bryce and Soap are complete morons. Ghost is there to just sell skins to the shop. Every character, good and bad, have plot armor protecting them from ever dying so they can just squeeze them to oblivion so they can just essentially sell them for more seasons. And the plot, good, good God, don't even get me started. The plot feels like it was written by a bunch of eight-year-olds soiling themselves on a daily basis. Where are the missiles? Tony's got their own missiles. No missiles inside. Two missiles. Two missiles. One missile the missiles, we gotta get the missiles, guys. The, the missiles are so important. Yeah, sure, the multiplayer has been inconsistent from being solid to complete dog water. But one thing that has been very consistent between every Call of Duty in this reboot of the Modern Warfare series is that each game's campaign is complete dog shit. That is one big pile of shit. Now, what does this have to do with Halo? Well, imagine they decide to go through with this Halo CE remake. Oh, it's here, baby. Time to get hyped. Then we find out it's a reboot of the series. I know every content creator out there is telling me, no, it's not a reboot. It's just a remake. Don't get yourself all riled up. Yeah, well, you know what? Keep telling yourself that. And if they do actually go through with it, then all of a sudden, the fear is going to start setting in. That means we have to hope that they don't ruin the original story of our favorite franchise and just make it horrible. Or worse, chase trends just to try to get the kids of the modern age to like Halo. Like imagine getting a comic relief version of the Master Chief making dumb jokes in serious moments like, oh, well, it looks like the Covenant's invading. Oh, I, I didn't see that coming. Just like every single Marvel production since Endgame. Oh yeah, that, that'll definitely work. This would just bother all of us and for a lot of Halo fans, it might be that breaking point where they just stop playing the games entirely. Because people assume that this would never happen and sometimes these fans have so much hope that even if the story changed slightly, fans are coping and saying, I'm sure it will be amazing anyway. You want to know an example of a reboot that was horrific and also greenlit by Microsoft? The Halo Show. I've led a mission or a campaign against the cancellation of Paramount's Halo Show garbage, and I'm proud of my work against this blasphemy. I've given my in-depth look at the show several times, so I don't want to bring back nightmares of how bad the show was overall, but I'll give you the cliff notes. It's trash. It's a special type of trash that passed through a porter potty and hand delivered right to your house so that you have to smell it. Like you could try to avoid it, but it will just find you and force you to smell it so you get sick. And if you never saw it, my word of advice is simple. Don't do it. You can go watch my videos and I think I can give you a better look at what actually is happening in the show 
rather than actually going to watch it yourself. Now think of everything bad that can happen with a reboot, and this show did everything that you would not want to see. It took our favorite characters and ruined them. Chief had sex with a coveted spy. The very simple and standard plot we had from the games was completely broken with nonsensical events, making all of us feel dumber. And what about the new additions to the story? Well, let's just say I would have rather sit my own diarrhea than rewatch the Halo show over again. And what's wild is that everything I watched was all greenlit by Microsoft. You think this is funny? In a cosmic sort of way, yes. Well, Mr. Funny Man, is this how you get your sick kicks? What? It's just an ordinary crabby- OH MY GOODNESS! So, somebody out there had to rub two brain cells together and utter sounds agreeing that this disgusting product should be added to the public. And I'm sure I can go all day into why the Halo show was complete trash, but my point of dropping this massive fart on the show is to explain that we can't just put it past Microsoft to make our favorite super soldier look like a complete clown. And they did this without batting an eye. Even the team from 3 for 3 couldn't help but talking trash against the show, and when they're on the side of reason, you know, you fucked it up. And lastly, I don't know about you, but one of the biggest concerns I have with a Halo CE remake is the lack of resources. If you did not know, Halo, in comparing itself to most other exclusive franchises out there, is considered one of the smallest dev teams in all of gaming. Yes, they aren't an indie team for sure, but when you compare Halo to Call of Duty or The Last of Us, it's immensely smaller. Well, what does this matter? Until Microsoft proves me wrong, they're going to force 343 to solely work on this project with zero to no help, which would only hurt the process towards a continuation of the story with the next installment. It's really easy to say, Mars, the story sucks, we need to reboot it and just start all over from scratch. But I've made several videos on the problem of doing this, and one of the biggest concerns I have is that if we're going to just sit back and stay in this pool of nostalgia, sucking on Chief's member berries, just so we don't have to continue the story, that's just dumb. You, you have to move on from the cope. Infinite story was actually not bad, and it actually put us into an interesting direction going forward. And instead of continuing this story and just pumping resources to make this game better and actually filled with content, we're going to just have to halt all that progress and just go back in time and just work on a remake instead? Now, don't get me wrong. If River 3 was chosen to work on Halo 7 while a new group was hired to complete this remake, then that would be completely different. Footed Ghost made a great point in saying that if we choose to divert resources away from 3 for 3, there's a good chance that any new project will be forced to slow down or not be made at all. And when you look at the overall FPS genre, not many games use stories at this point. Call of Duty is the only one at this point that I could see having a story, and it's still up in the air whether Black Ops 6 will actually be good, because we haven't had a good Call of Duty game in nearly a decade. X Defiant is losing its steam in the multiplayer, and they don't even have a story. And Battlefield is basically sitting in the shell realm getting high on live service seasonal passes with the board of directors over at the EA headquarters. 3 for 3 has proven that they lack leadership or enough people to meet the expectations that we have for them. So why is it that we're going to take away resources when they need everything they can get? I just don't think it's smart. And with starting over from scratch in the Unreal Engine, we don't even know if the end result will even feel like Halo. As much as I think that Unreal Engine 5 so far looks stunning with games like Hellblade 2, and some of the assets being shown off at the Xbox showcase for Gears of War E-Day. Oh, that's one hell of a peach fuzz right there. Halo has always been developed in a variation of the Blam engine, which has been consistent since the beginning, which honestly is a blessing and a curse. The engine was so nostalgic that Halo Infinite literally felt like a Halo 3 clone with more updated graphics and movements. There's a lot of criticisms we can make about Infinite overall, but no one ever said the gameplay didn't feel like a Halo game. It was the closest we had to ever to the originals, which is why I liked it so much. Even though the hit registration felt like I was in the movie Wanted, it still played well. A Halo CE remake is the unknown. We saw the garbage which was the Halo CE anniversary and how gross it looked. How do we know this Halo CE remake will be any better? Or hell, could it even be worse? So yeah, you can understand that even if a Halo remake might sound good at the moment, it's not an automatic dub. But if you want a Halo CE remake, quell my fears and why you think it will be a good idea. Or if you agree with me, tell me why. So now that I'm done pissing my pants and being a dark cloud, I want to dive deep into why this could be an amazing idea for the Halo franchise. If you want to feel old, and I mean really old, Halo CE dropped 24 years ago in November. That's 
that's kind of rough. Now for Chaz like me in your late 20s, 30s, and 40s, you most likely played Halo and have been fans of the series since the beginning. Back when I had the voice levels of Mickey Mouse and had no chest hair, it was literally my first console game other than Smash Bros. So even though all of us old farts love the story and cherish the games like it came out yesterday, if you were to ask the average 15 year old kid if they played Halo, they will either one, not know what the hell you're talking about, or only experience Halo 5, Halo Infinite, or worse, watch the Halo show. Yeah, the multiplayer is solid for Halo 5 and Infinite, but the collective story between Halo 5 and the Halo show has honestly made me lose years off my life. So in the mindset of Microsoft trying to get more people to buy into Halo and get hooked, it's honestly a brilliant idea to start where it all began. Halo CE isn't a complicated story, but take the same story and bring it back to the forefront, I mean, that actually might work. Younger fans might like the story, and in fact that it's a FPS game, will actually hit most of the shooter audiences. And the fact that most FPS games don't actually have good stories at this point, a Halo campaign might be good. It might actually break the mold and get people to fully invest in it again. Especially if Microsoft were to choose to add Halo on the PlayStation consoles, then don't you want all those new gamers to learn the story from the beginning? It honestly makes sense to me. And if you're a Halo fan since day one like me, this actually gives you hope because it shows that Microsoft is actually looking to invest in Halo for the long haul. Because up to this point, Microsoft sort of of looks at Halo more like a cash cow rather than actually a viable franchise deserving of love, like it's a bastard child or something. And based on the success of this release, it makes sense they would just continue with remakes heading into the sequels in Halo 2 and Halo 3, which would only build the brand even more. I mean, this next statement might piss off a lot of people, but I'm gonna say it. I wouldn't mind adding more lore to the story to connect it to the modern games. Take care. What you say is and before you throw hate in my comment section, let me explain. In the original Halo CE, you started out fleeing from the Covenant on the Pillar of Autumn, and it cuts to Jacob Keys initiating the Cold Protocol and Unfreezing Chief, and you start the game getting Cortana off the Pillar of Autumn and onto the Halo ring. Simple and easy, right? But imagine this. Instead of a game starting out on the Pillar of Autumn, what happens if we start on Reach with the invasion of the Covenant? That way, you can learn about the Spartans and Blue Team and by the end of the first mission, Chief is sent off the planet while Blue Team stays behind to fight. You progress through the game like you normally do, and you finish the game connecting the events of the lore from the old games to the modern era. This would literally be perfect because it shows more into the fact that the Fall of Reach was way bigger than what the initial games had conveyed, and it gives fans the knowledge that there was a massive amount of casualties on the planet, giving the Covenant more of a dangerous persona. Because if you look back at the original games, unless you knew the lore behind it, you had no idea that there was an entire conflict happening beforehand. You kind of were just thrown into this war with no real information going on. And for those fans of the newer games, it actually ties the lore what Bungie started in a fluid way to the newer generation. And it wasn't just hammered in there like a fat kid on a floaty. And by giving more thought into connecting lore for the series, then it legitimized the cool aspects that 343 had failed to expand on previously, like giving Blue Team their due. And you want to hear something wild? Maybe we take some time to develop Arbiter as the villain that he was during the first game. Velvadam was the elite commander that was leading the invasion force on Reach and Halo CE. So now we get to see him as a badass villain so that when we get to eventually see him in Halo 2 Remake, we can see his story come full circle. I think the opportunity of a remake gives devs the chance to expand on missions and lore aspects that had been initially cut from the game and now we can finally see them fully develop. And I don't have to read five books and listen to three podcasts to understand the backstory. And trust me, I'm not asking for them to change the story of the game, but by providing more information on some of the characters we love, we'll only have more of a deeper attachment to them. I'd much rather have a story that goes into more details expanding our characters in the right way than add new characters with horrible writing not helping the story at all. And I'm looking at you, Halo 5. And I know this might not be what classic Halo fans want to hear, but I'm one of those people that would be okay with the game getting some updates to the original gameplay mechanics. Say what? It's okay you can throw your tomatoes at me, but I want to explain my perspective. Halo CE was developed in a time where most FPS games did not have basic concepts of sprint and clamber. Anything faster than a jog in gameplay was seen as forbidden. I'm not calling for Halo CE to turn into a sweaty playground, but I also feel that having a similar gameplay feel of Infinite but adjusted for the maps 
would be almost perfect. As much as Halo Infinite has received a lot of hate, the one thing that most fans have praised is its gameplay, and a mixture between movement updates and mechanics feeling almost similar to that of the golden age of Halo, mirroring that of Halo 3. So imagine we're able to take those gameplay aspects and bring them to Halo CE. I feel like the game would be amazing. Don't get me wrong, the original formula was solid, but I will say that there were times I was traveling through the massive landscapes and parts of the campaign where I wish I had sprint. I'm sure you remember, but think back to the second mission of Halo CE, where you play on the mission Halo, and you're fighting against the Covenant and then some random Banshee or grenade just blows up your Warthog. So instead of you driving around the whole map, which was the initial intention behind it, you now have to play as Bear grills and hunt and scavenge the entire massive wilderness, hiking to your destination. Well, at least if you have sprint, then the hike won't be as annoying. And I'm not talking about super sprint, light speed sprint like we got in Halo 5, but a sprint similar to Halo Infinite or Reach, I mean, that's not that bad. It's, it's pretty doable. And yes, I get it. There's going to be fans that say, well, Bungie didn't have that in there because that wasn't their intention. But if we were to follow exactly what Bungie wanted, then we would have to include armor lock, jetpacks, because they're the ones that added that to the gameplay loop as well. And a lot of fans were kind of hating on that back then. There's ways to compromise on the modern takes of gameplay and keeping the feel of the classic titles. I think Halo C deserves to be kept in its initial form, but include ways to update the gameplay to a certain point where it doesn't feel like we're playing a video game made in 2001. As much as those were the golden days, I don't want to feel like I'm a golden girl. When I think about the most important aspect that needs to be kept consistent in order for this remake to actually work is simple. Keep to the world that the initial devs were trying to make with its creation and don't lose what made the game so amazing. Halo CE to a lot of people, including myself, made this franchise that we love. And if this game actually gets remade, they want to make sure that the game that created so much memories for us Halo fans gets the respect it deserves. And for some reason, people are unsure how to do this. There are quite a few remakes already out there that actually set the standard of what a remake should look like. Resident Evil 4, Dead Space, Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater, Final Fantasy 7, all honor the original versions of the games, characters, world building, and just overall feel. And yes, in many ways, they keep consistency of what the original game was, but also made updates to the gameplay to fix or adjust the flaws they were made in the originals. Yes, were there fans of the original Final Fantasy VII that were upset that Square Enix went with a complete change in the gameplay? Of course. But with their changes, the game is getting way more replayability compared to the original version. In some ways, expand it on the world so it opens up the storytelling. Resident Evil 4 kept the game nearly identical to the original, but adjusted the annoying gameplay aspects and just made it more fun. And I get it. For those fans of the original, there might be some pushback, but I think it's important to evolve, not stay the same. My hopes for a Halo remake is that we get a game that honors the past while keeping the story consistent while expanding on the lore elements that we never got to experience. And if Microsoft can pay an outside studio to work on this project so that 3 for 3 can continue working on other games, then at least I know that Halo is finally getting the dedication it deserves rather than being treated like the failure in the family of Xbox exclusives when it was one of the main reasons why Xbox brand had stayed alive throughout the years. And I can guarantee that if this new generation of gamers gets to experience Halo at what its core is, then it's almost certain that Halo will return to that essential franchise in the gaming universe, where it should be. But my clear warning is this, if you use this moment to rebrand Halo following along the same path of Call of Duty, then not only will you ruin the franchise that is the backbone of Xbox, but you also lose a good chunk of your fan base, and that's a damn fact. If you are interested in the future of what Halo could look like, I posted a video discussing the story I would want to see for Halo 7, so go check out the video in the end screen. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off, peace out guys. <laughs>